Looking for a new gimbal to stabilize your videos? The Feiyu A2000 is another product in the sub $1,000 category for stabilizing mirrorless or smaller DSLRs weighing under 4.4 pounds. It has solid performance stabilizing shakes from rotational motion, unique features like swappable dual handlebars with fully integrated electronic control, built-in quick release plate for installing or removing your camera, a unique trigger button that simplifies switching between gimbal modes, and a built-in time-lapse feature that makes it really easy to add some motorized motion to your videos. But there are some issues I have with it. Not having the most comfortable and ergonomic handles, and the thumbscrew locking mechanism for balancing the gimbal is a little finicky. Hi, I'm David, and these are my impressions of the Feiyu A2000 gimbal with dual handlebar kit that was provided to me for testing. So quickly looking at everything you get inside the box, everything comes nicely packaged in this soft shell case for storage and transportation. You have the gimbal motors and arm bracket with everything being adjustable with thumb screws, an included quick release plate that makes mounting and removing the camera from the gimbal super easy, and for the handle you have two options in this kit. You can either go with a single handlebar option and install the included mini tripod on the bottom, or easily swap to the dual handlebar option instead. The kit includes four batteries, but only two are used at a time installed in either the single or dual handlebars, and is quoted to last for up to 12 hours. A battery charger is also included that uses a standard micro USB cable, and an extra thumb screw, cold shoe plate, lens mounting accessories, and a shutter cable, but only for Sony cameras. What really caught my eye with this gimbal versus the competition was the dual handlebar setup. Having a handlebar distributes the weight over two arms, helping to reduce the fatigue when using the gimbal over a long period of time. The dual handlebars also give you more control to smoothly and accurately point the gimbal in the right direction. While you can find dual handlebar solutions for other gimbals in this price range as well, the integrated controller in the handlebar is really useful to change modes and move the gimbal without letting go of the handle and is wired into the handle so you don't need to worry about extra batteries for the remote control. This design also allows you to place the gimbal down on the floor or on a table because of the flat base, which is super convenient when taking breaks. And you can also flip the handle upside down that helps for lower shots, but it's hard to use the controls when in this orientation, and I find it a little more comfortable right side up, so that's how I prefer to use it instead. Carrying the dual handlebars is a little more bulky to pack in a bag, but they do fold up shrinking its footprint which makes it a little more convenient. Alternatively, you can always swap between the single and dual handlebar option by quickly popping off the gimbal and screwing it into the other handle. Both the dual handlebar and single handlebar have the exact same controls and functionality. If you're familiar with gimbals, it has most of the standard modes you expect. Panning mode that's perfect for just walking around or getting that parallax effect. Panning and tilting mode when you just want to easily transition from pointing at things low or high. But unique to this gimbal is the trigger button that you hold to enable the lock mode to keep the gimbal pointed in the same direction. This trigger button is actually really useful to instantly switch between one of the panning modes and the lock mode. And you can also double click it at any time to reset the gimbal position orientation which I find myself using quite often. Three clicks of the mode turns it around to selfie mode and then four clicks to go into the time-lapse mode. I really like the time-lapse feature. You basically move the gimbal and set the start position and then set the end position and from there it's all automatic. Setting how fast it moves can be configured inside the phone app. I find it works well if you're just creating a pan or tilt time-lapse, but if you try to combine them both, it gets a little complicated to get just right. And finally, for controls, there's a shutter button, but the kit only includes a cable for Sony cameras, so I can't test that functionality. The app I tested on my Android phone is pretty simple and has all the basic features such as remote control and allows you to quickly change the motor settings. Overall, performance and features of the Feiyu A2000 are really solid whether you go with a single handlebar or dual handlebar design. And the unique trigger button is definitely a differentiator that can be critical for some users. But there are also some issues to be aware of that hold this gimbal back from being the best solution for me. The ergonomics and design of the grip for this device is probably my biggest issue with the gimbal. The soft touch plastic used on the handles is nice to the touch, but otherwise there isn't much grip to the handles. Without any grooves or contours to the handle design, adding the fact that the handle is quite thick, my hands get tired pretty quickly gripping on these handles, and it will commonly slide up the handle over time. But adding the mini tripod to the single handlebar helps with the grip for my second hand, 
and when using the dual handlebars, this is less of an issue because of the distributed weight. Another issue with ergonomics is if you like to keep it in locked mode a lot like I do. The only way to activate this mode is by holding down the trigger button, which severely limits how you can hold the gimbal while using this mode, needing to constantly have a finger on the trigger. And finally, I don't find the location of the joystick that great either. With my finger gripped on the trigger button, I'm always accidentally pressing on the joystick, which would be better positioned higher up or more recessed into the handle to prevent me from accidentally pressing it all the time. The other big issue I have with the gimbal is a locking mechanism for the thumb screws for balancing the gimbal. I'm not going to cover how to balance a gimbal in this video, but you'll need to adjust these arm brackets longer or shorter to balance your camera in place. The problem is that on the A2000, they decided to use a sawtooth design, which was supposed to help with the discrete positions when adjusting, but I find this design just makes it more troublesome than it was worth. It's hard to make micro adjustments with the sawtooth design, and often the perfect balance point will be right in between these discrete positions. Also with the sawtooth locking mechanism, I find it jams in place a lot when held at certain angles, and at other angles it moves really smoothly which makes the balancing process a little bit more cumbersome, as I'm constantly needing to rotate the brackets just to shift them around. And finally, when tightening the thumb screw in place, you'll need to ensure they're locked properly in the sawtooth design, or sometimes it will shake loose. So I always need to double or triple check my thumb screws by jiggling the brackets around to make sure the screws are staying tight. In the end, I'm conflicted about this gimbal. On one hand, I really want to like the gimbal with its well-designed dual handlebar implementation, really useful trigger button, built-in quick release plate, and the time-lapse feature that will really come in handy. But the less than ideal ergonomics with the controls and handle, and the frustrating experience balancing the gimbal the first couple times because of the locking mechanism, are issues that I can't really ignore. But I still think it's a solid gimbal for certain people as long as you find the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video, you know what to do, and I'll see you in the next video.